yeah correct that would be better okay so today we are going to see that um, what is mean by archiving and what is mean by compressing the files and how its help has in um, taking the backups okay so this is we are going to see in this uh, section let's see here if you have a file okay so may, most of the times what we do here it is that uh, what are the important files are what are the important configuration files are there so we will take the backup okay so but before doing an archive so what are the uh, things we have to consider into taking the backup right so what is the consideration we take here it is suppose say from file 1 to file 10 I have okay these are my important files okay every day these files may change may not change okay but I want to take the backup so what is the best method to take the backup so all the times you wanted to keep these copies and copies and copies and copies so that is going to increase your storage requirement right adding it you yeah automated job only right so we don't want to do all the times like manually every time you want to run some script and uh, see what it's running properly or not right so we just wanted to do some small script or small command so it's do for us okay so how it's going to do here so every time you wanted to keep a copies of all this file file 1 to file 10 file 1 to file 10 file 1 to file 10 then so if you suppose assume that file 1 to file 10 is your 100 mb in size then every day 100 mb you are going to keep adding 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 so after 30 days what is the size you are going to increase okay then after a three months after the six months how the storage space is going to increase right but i don't want it to do that so what i wanted to do here it is that whatever the updated file or whatever the content is updated on the files that only i wanted to take as a backup for the that day or that week okay so how that can be going to be happened here it is that so there is a mechanism called archiving okay so what this archiving is going to do here it is that so whatever the file properties are there like uh, uh, when the file has been created what is the file file size and who created it when it is modified when it is accessed all those parameters will be considered when you are taking the backup when you are archiving the files okay so what it will check it out file timestamp and file size who modified it when it is accessed and when it is modified okay is the file size uh, is constant or the same size as yesterday's and today's okay all those stuff will be considered here in the archive okay so most of the times what we do here it is that using an a tar command okay what we do we will create a um, just to say that um, okay file dot tar file we have created okay if you say if you create a group of files combined into the one tar file which is say archive okay which is not compressed file okay so why I am saying here it is it is an archive it is not in a compressed file because archive files can be updated later but compressed files cannot be updated later okay so suppose say as I said the example here it is that file 1 file 2 file 10 I have archived into this file dot r then later on I modified file file 5 I have modified if I want to archive this I want to run an archive on these 10 files then it is not going to take the uh, 
uh, file 1 to file 10 into the archive it's going to take only file 5 into the archive okay how it is how it is remembers that i have modified only file 5 okay that's why it is take the all the considerations here and it's um, take into the archive okay then what is mean by compressed file suppose say if you take an archive file as a so what we are doing here it is that we are just uh, keeping all the files into one bucket okay that's it but we, we are not doing any compression method or we are not applying any compression here okay so if your file 1 to file 10 is 100 mb then if you compress or uh, if you archive it using the, a single file it is also a 100 mb there is no size difference okay it is archived it is not compressed so we are not using any algorithm here we are just what i am doing here it is we are just tying up all the files together into the one file that's it okay so what is mean by compressing here it is that so after the tar so if you if the same command we use for the compressing and archiving the files but where we use a little extensions okay dot gz dot bz2 for compressing the files okay so what this will do here it is if you apply in a gun zip or the, if you apply in a bun zip okay b zip or z zip or uh, may maybe in a um, zip file dot zip yeah b b b z2 yeah it is b zip the extension is b z2 right Yeah, it, it's mean by bzip the compression method see here if you are talking about the dot dz dot bz2 or dot zip what what are those here it is that those are the com compression methods okay so dot dz will use a different compression method algorithm and uh, dot bz2 will use a different comparison compression method and dot zip will use a different comparison algorithm okay so here why we are defining this extension is that if you use an a dot zz or if you use an a dot bz2 comparing both the files you you get an a file size difference after compressing you will get an a file size difference whereas dot zip cannot compress in more compression ratio but whereas bz2 will compress in more compression ratio okay that is only the difference here that does not mean that what is mean by the bz2 and what is mean by the gz okay we can simply say that gz is we call it as gzip or the gun zip okay we call it bz2 is a bzip or bun zip okay so this is normal zip file okay so let's see here practically how it's going to be uh, updated or the how it is going to be uh, differentiate between the archive and the compressed file okay this is my desktop here so I just opened in one more terminal here and just I want to create few files here okay let's say touch I want to create file 1 to 20 okay dot txt files okay and touch um, maybe create different <coughs> doc file one to ten dot doc files okay so 
after that what i'm going to do here it is i'm going to add little bit uh, content to these files okay maybe i can uh, open a file one dot txt and uh, add something here it is okay this is the file contains little bit of lines okay then what we are doing here it is we are just copying and pasting here and uh, uh -huh. just i want to create some data okay yeah i just want to create some file size okay okay and uh, file one dot txt and what i'm doing here it is i'm just updating to file two dot txt so which means it will create a little bit of content here see the size is increased okay like that you can also do a file to dot txt to something file for dot txt okay so this will also create some size now what i'm going to do here it is so here i'm just going to create a archive tar dot yes Uh, adding it you yeah we have some files yeah dark one dark two uh, no I did not create any data okay 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 Okay. Okay, you want to data from here to that. Yeah. That's it, right? Here it is all the all our files only. okay okay so what i am going to do here it is cvf okay i'm just going to create c means create v for verification f for file okay so i'm verberos yeah verberos okay verberos in the sense the progress of the file it will display on the screen so what is going on the here it's going to uh, just is going to display on the uh, terminal itself okay so now what i'm going to do here it is i'm just creating a uh, backup dot tar file okay with all the files which is located on the desktop okay all the files i am including this tar dot dz files all the stuff files here let's say create it so now i just created the file of tar dot file so if i use do iphone sh and see this file what is the size okay so it is 72 mb okay if i do a do in the sense it is under disk usage disk usage in the sense i am doing the current desktop what is the size I'm... hello i didn't get you Doc 
six dot this one yeah you can use any file right any file you can use not only that file any file you can check it out the size using the the du du okay okay so what i'm doing here is that do you iphone sh so if you can do here see here the tar of uh, vmware tool file is containing 70 mb and remaining file contains a around 2 mb in size okay so that's why the total file size of backup is 72 mb okay now what i'm doing here it is that i'm just editing the <coughs> fifth file okay and i'm i'm saying that updated <coughs> again i'm going to do here it is r iphone cvf and i'm just going to give a backup dot tar file and giving star so now as per our previous discussion what it's now do here it is it's only take the file 5 into the backup dot tar file okay let's see now oh sorry sorry okay file let's say file 6 sorry file 5 okay file 5 updated and what i have to do here it is i have to use u u for update okay so i just used to see that's why it is saying again it's is want to create the file okay now if you take this one hmm? what happened you we have iPhone UVF backup dot star star see here so what happened here it is it's only taken file 5 into the backup archive okay so how it is recognized it, the file only updated so that's what I am saying so the file will whenever it is taking the copy of the file so it will consider all those mechanism that the file ownership the file timestamp file size all the stuff okay so later on any file property has been changed then that is going to take into the archive okay now what you can do here it is that tar iphone cjvf okay i'm just going to create a uh, gzip file gzip dot tar dot gz okay this is the extension for that so now what i'm going to do here it is i'm going to create a file with uh, tar dot star dot txt okay star dot doc and uh, star dot tar dot zz okay unless or else we can just uh, what i can do here it is that move back a file to somewhere else okay so now tar iphone cjvf i am going to create a zg file dot tar dot gz and provide star okay enter here so now it's created tar dot gzip dot tar file has been created again i am going to create one more file called cjvf okay bz file dot tar dot gz and uh, sorry again we move this file gz file into temporary directory okay we can create a tar file again so here instead of z we can use j instead of gz we have to use bz2 okay now one more zip file one zip has been created here 
it's creating yeah okay uh, adding it you whatever the file we moved from okay okay Yeah, it, it will be available in temporary directory only, right? The temporary e directory is for meant for copying any temporary files. Okay, so what I did here it is while while I am compressing the file, I want to check it out the all the sizes. What are the sizes of the BZ or the uh, GZ file or the uh, BZ2 file? If I compress the uh, files which are already compressed, then the size is going to be uh, huge, right? Then we cannot compress, we cannot uh, verify that what is the compression ratio has been used for Gunzip or what is the compression ratio has been used for Gunzip. Okay, so that's why I just moved for temporary purpose and again I just moved back from temporary directory to desktop. Okay, see here if you can do a comparison here what is the size we are going to get okay so for bungee we got 70 mb and gz file we got 69 mb or if you can see here what is the size of this backup file here is 72 mb right we can simply compare here that so what is the compression ratio has been utilized as used for the bz2 or tz gz file or the uh, just archive file so there is archive file does not compress anything so it is as it is what are the 72 mb has been there 72 mb but gz file has been compressed high in this case so it is used as a 69 mb now the gz file is the bz2 is 70 mb so the compression ratio is varies because the algorithm is used between the gz and the bz2 is different okay so this is the method how we can do here it so basically what we can do here it is we create an one archive file and we whatever the configuration files you wanted to back up so we can simply use tar iphone first time you use cvf after that uvf you just use and provide this backup tar file wherever it is and after the tar file has been created so daily it will update whatever the configuration has been changed to that backup file after that what we will do here it is cjvf and um, create one more zip file okay with the final backup something like that okay dot tar dot gz file including the star file so what happens here it is that that backup file is going to be compressed into that final dot final backup dot dot gif so our face um, space will be saved and it will be compressed like that so this archive what happens here it is archive will be updated every day whatever the configuration has been changed or the whatever the file changes to that <coughs> back backup dot tar archive file and that archive file can be compressed and this compressed file can be moved to the any other location where it will be safe or another uh, location maybe not in the same server we, we can move into the different server for the file server or something else so our configuration fil files will be in, in safe place like that we can do a simple backup method for using a tar command okay so how we can see the file yeah Uh, 
final back only so here the first method is the no it is not output it is saying that this file has been compressed <coughs> yeah see here okay so what it is saying that whenever you are doing an attar what it will show here it is that the progress of the file so if you can go back to here if you see here so what i'm doing here it is creating the bin zip file and it is showing all these files as the output why because these are the files has been included into that bin zip it is saying okay so like that so this is the file has been created now if you check this file size here it will be 118 mb okay so what is okay like that our file backup size will be created okay now if you want to extract here or if you want to see the files what are the files are there in that um, um, zip file or the archive file how you can see here using the tar iphone tf okay or tv <coughs> tvf you can simply type here and provide the file name okay zzip dot tar dot zz file so it will show all the files what are the files are there in that zip file without extracting them okay you can also see any file okay tf or if you want to see in bz okay bz also you can see tf using tf or tvf okay so it will show you all the files if you want to extract here the files okay what are the files you wanted to extract here so what i'm doing simply i'm just deleting all the files of dot txt here and uh, rm iphon rf again star dot doc files okay all the doc files and all the text files has been deleted from here i'm just going to extract xvf you can simply use and provide this tar file name or the path complete path so that it will be extracted okay now you can see here all the files has been back with our existing data see here there are the some data in file 1 file 4 and uh, here right so our data is back like that you can do a archive and compression using a tar file but archive is not compression compression is not an archive okay so that is only the difference you have to understand here so from this what is you are going to get here it is one question you may get that um, yeah, they will give some location of the uh, path if they wanted to create some tar file with the given file name okay this is the examination question you are going to get it from this topic okay so there are the other methods also for copying or the uh, uh, copying the files from one server to other using an scp or you can also use an a rsync rsync command okay so scp is simply copy a secure uh, method what the scp is based on ssh okay what it will do here it is the scp uses a ssh protocol to copy the files from one location one server to other server okay simply you can use scp here and provide the file name what is the file name you wanted to copy okay suppose a file dot uh, okay sorry slash desktop file one dot txt okay where you want to copy okay you just provide that server ip address 
colon r you can also provide the username which username you wanted to utilize for that and provide the path where you want to copy so i am copying this file onetxt 2 okay root user and server 2 in slash root slash desktop path okay you can simply hit enter so that the file will be copied into the server 2 location okay this scp is based the base of ssh okay you can simply copy from that location to this location as well server 2 to server 1 also you can copy using the scp like this okay scp and you can provide root at the rate server 2 colon slash root slash desktop slash file 1 dot txt and you can simply provide that so that from server 2 <coughs> to hello ankit okay so this will copy from server 2 to server 1 okay like this you, you can also use here okay or else if you want to copy entire directory you can use scp hyphen r and provide the directory path and you can use the same method here something like this r when we are in the sense the recursive so wherever you use for uh, copying the directory you use r right the recursive copy method it will use in the sense recursive copy the directory of entire directory what are the path files are there in the directory it will copy to the remote machine okay you can use like this but the thing here it is if you are copying a large file using the scp if in the middle if the transaction has been the file transaction has been interrupted then there is no resuming will be happen in the scp what happened you have to copy again from the first okay but whereas if you use a rsync rsync command so this will what happens here it is if you provide an rsync and the file or directory path to be remote server then in the middle if the transaction has been failed or copied has been stopped there then if you initiate the rsync again it will not copy the entire files it will copy only the remaining files from the source to destination so basically rsync is used for <coughs> taking the backup of one directory or the one partition from one server to other server or sync the partition files configuration files everything from one location to other location so the rsync is very useful in the case of um, taking the backups okay yeah um, okay this is about today's class um, so we just we just learned uh,